I was uh, asked to uh, describe strategies for a uh, rapid detection of uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, my focus will be on uh, detection at the uh, point of care. Uh, primarily, we are interested in uh, testing at home uh, with uh, spatial temporal surveillance. Uh, and the objective is uh, to avoid the uh, scenes, uh, like you see in the image here, which I clipped from a newspaper, uh, describing a, a queue waiting to be tested uh, and exercising uh, physical uh, proximity. Uh, in addition, uh, there is uh, interest in testing in uh, doctor's office, primary care sites, pharmacies, and points of entry. And the objective is to get the uh, test results quickly uh, so people can uh, modify behavior if they test positive, self-quarantine, uh, and alike. Uh, and uh, one of the other issues is that uh, given the uh, rate of infection, uh, it's uh, probably impossible uh, to meet demand with existing laboratory facilities and uh, might be impractical uh, uh, to do so. Um, so uh, what are the uh, possible uh, tests that one can uh, look at? Uh, um, molecular tests are uh, primarily used uh, uh, to detect uh, uh, active uh, infection, uh, essentially um, identifying presence of uh, nucleic acids associated with the uh, pathogen, uh, immunoassays or lateral flow strips uh, are probably not sensitive enough uh, and will not work during the uh, seroconversion uh, process, uh, but they may become very, very important uh, to identify people who have been infected and uh, developed immunity and uh, enable them to go back uh, to the uh, workforce. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, nucleic acid detection, uh, the most uh, uh, common methods are uh, uh, PCR. Uh, all of you are familiar, probably better than me. Uh, PCR requires thermal cycling, which means that uh, it requires fairly complex uh, equipment uh, and usually is done in centralized laboratories, uh, although uh, you can uh, um, miniaturize uh, PCR and do it at the point of care. PCR provides high sensitivity, high specificity, uh, but it's uh, somewhat slow, two hours, and uh, requires uh, two primers. Uh, the level of multiplexing is somewhat uh, limited. Uh, so in the point of care community, uh, there is a great interest in uh, isothermal amplification strategies uh, because they are much simpler uh, to implement. If you keep the temperature fixed, you don't need cycling. The equipment can be much simpler and usually they are much more efficient uh, than PCR reducing the uh, time uh, for the assay. Uh, so the most popular assays are uh, uh, many of them, sorry about that. Uh, there are many assay market, uh, but uh, the most popular ones are loop-mediated isothermal amplification uh, and recombinase polymerase amplification, RPA. Uh, LAMP is uh, done at 63 degrees Celsius. Uh, it requires between four and six primers, uh, and it can be done with very simple equipment or without any equipment at all. Uh, and in addition to uh, fluorescent-based detection, uh, one can use colorimetric uh, detection, uh, which again simplifies or removes the need for equipment. Uh, LAMP is very highly sensitive. It's specific uh, and typically requires about this. 30 minutes. Uh, given the large number of uh, uh, primers, uh, typically it's hard to multiplex and uh, usually you won't uh, uh, have more than uh, uh, two targets being detected in the same assay. Uh, and indeed, LAMP is 
uh, being used in uh, multiple uh, point of care uh, devices and uh, uh, the most recent one uh, for COVID-19 is uh, from a MOVE Biosciences located in uh, the San Francisco area. Uh, they are using a lamp assay in combination of a CAS-12, so they get, uh, in addition to the lamp, uh, linear amplification and then detect uh, uh, the product on lateral flow strip. Uh, so basically, uh, they have to open the tube, and uh, uh, which uh, we typically don't like to do because we are dealing with a um, high level of products, and once they get into the environment, uh, you are likely to have all um, a subsequent test turn positive once you had one positive test. Uh, the second uh, isothermal assay is uh, recombinase uh, polymerase amplification, RPA, uh, which is carried out at 37 degrees, which happens to be body fluid. So you can incubate the assay simply by uh, keeping uh, the um, tube under your armpit or in your pocket. Uh, it's a uh, Equipment, uh, very, very simple, uh, and uh, usually detection is done with a lateral flow strip. Um, the sensitivity is uh, moderate, uh, and uh, there is no specificity. Uh, the assay essentially amplifies all nucleic acids uh, uh, that are present, and uh, uh, detection must be uh, specific, uh, this can be done with molecular beacons or with uh, lateral flow detection. Uh, it's a very, very rapid assay, about 15 minutes, uh, moderate level of multiplexing, uh, and ABOT ID now just uh, uh, developed an asset for COVID-19 uh, using our API with molecular beacons detection. Uh, this instrument costs about $10,000, and it's essentially modification of the uh, test for a, um, which uh, was pre-existing for a, um, detecting a, um, other infections. Uh, at Penn, uh, we uh, developed a, an assay which is a hybrid uh, between RPA and LAMP. Uh, so we are using two isothermal temperatures, uh, 37 degrees and 63, uh, with colorimetric uh, detection. Uh, we have high sensitivity, high specificity. The test takes about 30 minutes, and uh, we can detect uh, or co-detect up to about 16 uh, different targets, and this is a, a conceptual uh, image of our test. We like to do our tests with a smartphone uh, for uh, um, detection as well as uh, for control with the idea that uh, most people have uh, a smartphone available to them uh, and uh, this would reduce the cost of the uh, equipment. Uh, so I have here a slide that uh, describes the uh, uh, molecular biology of uh, the different uh, uh, amplification procedures, but since uh, uh, we are well beyond time. I will skip it uh, and go and describe to you uh, briefly the work that we have done on uh, COVID-19 uh, using uh, uh, both a uh, lamp with uh, colorimetric detection and our two-stage RAM test. Uh, this work was carried out by a couple of people in my lab, uh, Mohammed El Tolof, who uh, was a Fulbright scholar from uh, Egypt and uh, Jinja Song, who is a, a current member of uh, my lab. Uh, so what basically you see here are the amplification curve uh, uh, done with the lamp assay, uh, RT-PCR, and uh, uh, RAMP. In uh, all these cases, uh, we use fluorescent detection. Uh, with the PCR, with uh, purified samples, we get a limit of detection of a uh, uh, 70 uh, nucleic acids per uh, a, per a assay or per a volume uh, lamp gives us similar 
limit of detection and the ramp uh, is 10 times uh, more um, sensitive. Uh, when we use raw samples, and by raw samples we mean that uh, uh, we take a, a nasal swab and uh, um, put it in a water and heat up to about 65 degrees Celsius, uh, with PCR and lamp we can detect uh, 700 copies uh, per uh, assay, a uh, ramp can do uh, seven. So, so one advantage of the isothermal amplification techniques is also that they are uh, uh, sensitive to impurities. Uh, PCR is much, much uh, more uh, sensitive uh, to presence of uh, inhibitors. Uh, so the image here uh, gives you an example of uh, an assay with colorimetric uh, detection using uh, LCV dye. The LCV dye in the uh, absence of uh, amplicons uh, is essentially colorless. Uh, in the presence of amplicons, it turns to be uh, dark violet and uh, very easy to detect. Uh, the, the next panel essentially describes the two-stage uh, uh, ramp assay. Uh, what we do here, we do the RPA in the cup uh, of the uh, tube. Uh, when we close the cup, uh, we incubate at 37 degrees, and then we mix the RPA products with the lamp uh, buffer, which is uh, in the actual tube, uh, and incubate at 63 uh, degrees, and then we can de detect either colorimetrically or with fluorescence just as uh, in a real time PCR. And uh, for uh, contrived targets, uh, the results are very, very good. Uh, we still need to do actual experiments with patient samples. Uh, we have a, a preprint uh, on the web uh, which uh, uh, you are welcome to look at if you are interested. Uh, so our uh, uh, idea is uh, eventually to incorporate this in uh, what we call the pen smart cup. Uh, so we have a, a processor which can be very inexpensive and simple uh, and with a smartphone detection as well as uh, for uh, surveillance. Uh, in this particular smart cup, uh, uh, we use an exothermic reaction just as in ready-to-eat meals. People who are hiking may be familiar with those and face change material uh, to uh, control the, temp the incubation temperature. And uh, we can read the results with a smartphone as uh, the contrast is quite uh, significant. So there shouldn't be a difficulty in identifying a positive test. Uh, and what we are doing right now in collaboration with uh, Susan Weiss Lab, uh, we are going to look at the uh, patient samples uh, and see how well the assay operates in a uh, uh, real life. And uh, in addition, uh, we are uh, studying uh, how much uh, material uh, we can uh, obtain from nasal swabs and uh, what will be an appropriate uh, uh, way to uh, basically remove the virus from the swab as well as to deactivate it. Uh, so, so this basically brings me to the end of my talk.